This is Dan 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 Show. Dan 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 Show. Oh yeah. Early in 1993, I saw my old friend and Zap Club comrade Yvonne, Evo Luna in town one day and she told me that Captain Sensible was jamming with Dr Space Toad at the Prince Albert pub on Monday evenings. I'd got to check that one out, I thought. And when I went along, I found Club Space Toad to be in full swing. The duo had been joined by the flamboyant Roy on theatrics and synths, making the evening both psychedelic and very funny. The next time I went, I brought some percussion along so I could join in. To begin with, I would do a solo slot in the middle of the evening when other performers could do their bit, but somehow this didn't work so well. I was more into playing along with the boys. It was really good fun. I didn't know it, but this was the beginning of my journey towards becoming keyboard player in the dad. Up to then, I'd known Captain some years, but not closely. We hadn't really played music together. Club Space Toad changed all that. The Albert at that time was not the clean plush place it is now. It was a real dive. You had to go outside to the toilet and on the way dodge the dog turds left by the animals that wandered about and occasionally pile of vomit left by Mr Up in One. A big fat cat with huge bollocks wandered around on the bar decorated with all sorts of old junk, gas masks, bits of mannequins and broken instruments. The land people, John and Lorna, were very into the music. It was the perfect place for such an event. The format for the beginning and the end of the evening were the same each week. Welcome to Club Space Toad, Paul would begin. Home for sad lunatics from the end of time. And the madness would begin with the psychedelic jam. Captain was playing bass guitar, like he did originally in the Damned, and Space Toad, acoustic guitar and mandolin. Clad in flamboyant but odd-looking clothes and a battered top hat, the Toad styled, styled himself as the troubadour from the fourth dimension, and imagined that the Albert had become a spaceship travelling through time and space. A lot of crazy and very humorous dialogue would go on between Roy and the Toad, and every so often Captain would join in with some derogatory comment about Space Toad, or Space Turd as we, he would often call him. How dare you, the Toad would reply. I didn't come here to be insulted. But that seemed the very reason for him being there. He presented this very pompous, self-obsessed persona, and everyone couldn't but join in an insult slinging, or toad baiting, as Captain called it. The thing was, you could never tell how serious the toad was about himself, or as he obviously had the saving grace of great good humour. He off, he'd even written a song about himself, how he was the greatest prophet of all mankind. There was Jesus Christ, Mohammed and Buddha, but I am the final one. <laughs> However, he was also keen to try and exploit a position to impress the women, in competition with the others. Roy was just incredible. A, to a total natural for flamboyance, exhibitionism, he could be very rude and get his tadger out at any opportunity, and a kind of camp psychedelic humour. He couldn't play, he couldn't sing, but he was such a natural showman it didn't matter. Sometimes he would come as Captain Barrington White, a cranky old army captain who thought the war was still on, in his uniform with a megaphone and a lot of camouflage netting. At other times, he was ecclesiastical. The bishop, Cardinal Sin, or Monsignor Maurice, complete with his confectional, confessional box and a blow-up nun. Roy is a natric centric English freak in the tradition of Bob Calvert, Arthur Brown and Viv Stanshaw, and he has often introduced the damned on various, at various gigs. Captain was tending to take the back seat in the engine room, as Roy later put it, driving the spaceship with his bass playing. 
occasionally making announcements or starting the toad baiting. He proved he was still able to create chaos and mayhem too. I remember often the final of the evening would end up with him, Toad and Roy in a mass of overturned tables, chairs and equipment sprawled on the floor with a lot of feedback screams and synth noise. Somehow I noticed Captain could do all this without breaking anything or hurting anyone. Mind you, the Toad did get occasionally a bump on the head from the old bash from Captain's microphone or bass head. The Toad set was usually the same. Psychedelic tunes like Time Machine, Trying to Be Weird, Carnival Town and some great ballads, Don't Push the River and Tragic Nature. Space Hode had the right voice for these kind of songs, deep and rich. After this and before the break, in which other performers would play, while Space Hode propped up the bar and tried to cash in on the female interest, he would sing Another pint of Guinness for the toad and one would magically appear from the bar. After the Guinness and the bird hunting, the House of Sad Lunatics would start up again, usually only for a few extended songs, with the toad on mandolin. Set the controls for the Heart of the Sun, the Pink Floyd classic, My Old Mate, the Koi Pew, and Dance of the Toad, before all the chaos I described earlier that brought the experience to a close. This is the end, beautiful friend, the end of Club Space Toad. Until next Monday, this is the end, sang Paul through the feedback amidst the mess. What a great night it was. Club Space Toad took place, took place almost every week at the Albert for a few years until it got moved on. 